far and away the most frequently asked question that I get, aside from which camera to buy. And I'll never tell you exactly which camera to buy because that's such like a personal choice, but I will tell you exactly how I get clients. <laughs> What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to grow your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And today I'm sharing with you my top three favorite strategies for finding new clients, especially that I used a lot when I was first starting out and building my portfolio and building my client list. And the good news is there are a ton of different ways to find clients. These are just the three that have personally worked for me and that are kind of my go-tos, but there are a ton of different ways to get clients and there are a ton of clients out there that anybody who tells me, oh, well, there's just too much competition, there's not enough work to go around, I just say, you're not trying hard enough. So the first strategy I use is to connect with, get to know, build relationships with the people who can hire you for the kind of work that you want to do. So for example, when I was first starting out, uh, I wanted to do restaurant work, you know, photographing restaurant menus, things like that. And and so the people who hire for that, you know, you might think, oh, well, then I need to get to know, you know, chefs, restaurant owners, managers. Certainly that doesn't hurt, but I have found more value in especially the restaurant space as well as in the food brand space, connecting with the PR agencies that specialize in food and restaurants. So for example, here in Phoenix, there are a ton of different PR agencies, public relations, but there are only a handful that specialize in food, that they have quite a few clients in their portfolio that are restaurants or food brands that are food centric. And so the idea being, if you're connecting with that PR agency and they hire you to shoot for one of their food clients, there's a good chance that if you do a good job, they would then hire you to work with one of their other clients. That it's a way to connect with a larger network than just the individual restaurants one-to-one. -one. And two, PR agencies and marketing firms are the ones who generally want the photos because they need something to send to the local newspaper, the magazines, or to create the website in order to promote that given business. And also, they're gonna understand the value of quality food photography, that you may not have as many channels challenges negotiating prices and talking about contracts because that's something that they are already familiar with. So how do you find out about these agencies and who the contacts are? Well, the good old Google machine will be your friend. You just type in, you know, public relations, restaurants, Phoenix or Buffalo, Omaha, wherever you are, and you should theoretically get a couple of hits. You can also do a general search of PR agencies in your area and they usually have some sort of client list. And two, if they are specializing in food, they will generally state that as something that's important on their website. You can also find information through professional PR organizations. So for example, here in Phoenix, a lot, I say the majority of the professional PR agencies are affiliated with the PRSA Phoenix. So the Public Relations Society of America Phoenix, that's a mouthful. So just another way to find out who you need to be talking to. But now the important part of the equation is actually talking to them, connecting with them, which for a lot of us as creatives is not like naturally our wheelhouse. You know, I even though I might seem outgoing and you know, charismatic and all these things on YouTube, in real life, like I'm much more introverted. So it's not my nature to just like pick up the phone and start calling people. But over the years, I've gotten used to it. I understand and have accepted the fact that being a freelancer and being a photographer, if I want to see success, that means I'm also a salesperson. Because, and I love how Joel Grimes put this, he says that the best photographers are not always the most successful photographers. That really the most successful photographers are the ones who know how to market themselves and get out there and be a salesperson. And so really the only answer that I have for you is to rip off the band-aid and do those things that scare you and make you worried and make you nervous and know that over time it gets easier picking up that phone, making those connections. And as you build that portfolio and you start to do work, it gets easier and easier. That first step though, oh, it's terrifying. 
So my advice is just don't think about it. Start picking up the phone, start sending emails, connect with people. That is how you are going to get hired. And especially in the beginning, I did a lot of taking people out to lunch, taking people out for coffee, taking people out for happy hour. I mean, <laughs> my expense list for meals and entertainment was quite high in those early years because I just wanted to get to know these people. I wasn't necessarily going in with the agenda to get hired. It's more about finding colleagues in the industry, connecting with them, understanding what are their struggles, what are the things they're going through, how can I understand their business so that then when it comes time that they need photographs, that they know I understand who they are and what they need and how I can be most helpful to them. And then I also did a lot of emailing and just shouting it from the rooftops and letting everybody in their pet guana know that I am a photographer, I'm a food photographer, I'm available to be hired. And so making sure to email follow up with somebody I'd had coffee with, or if I wasn't able to connect in person with somebody, ensuring that they had my name, my contact information, they'd seen my portfolio, they knew how to engage with me. And it's not just emailing them once because here's how it's going to go is that you're going to connect with them you're going to email them they're going to receive your information but chances are they don't need to hire a photographer like right that minute they might need a photographer two months from now or six months from now the likelihood that they're going to remember you if you've only connected with them and only via email once is pretty slim chance. Whereas if you've connected with them multiple times or you've done something for them or you have met them in person and you've forged a relationship the likelihood obviously goes up and up. So moving on to the second method for finding clients. And this is admittedly an easier process because it doesn't require you to go out and start just cold calling and networking, but you don't have, I find, as much control over the volume of work that you're doing and the price points, things like that. But again, a really great way to get started is through Shutterstock Custom. Now, you're probably familiar with Shutterstock as a stock photography company. I've never personally had a lot of success in the stock world. I, I just never really put the time into it. All that tagging, it just, Ooh, seemed like a lot of work to me. Uh, but they have a custom division that you can apply to and become one of their custom contributors. And so if you're accepted into the program and become a custom contributor, then what happens is you start to receive emails every so often pitching you creative briefs that then you can opt into. And if you are then selected for a given brief, you're guaranteed payment. So it's not like you're taking this work, creating work and hoping to get paid. You are guaranteed payment for a set number of images with with very specific, you know, outline details of what the images need to look like. Are they horizontal? Are they vertical? Are they close-ups? Are they far away? It's like all sorts of detail information uh, about what you need to be shooting. They'll send you the product if there's a product involved. And the other advantage is that you are working directly with somebody at Shutterstock who is probably most likely also a photographer and understands like what it is to be a photographer and what it requires to do the work that you're being asked to do and the things that that you will need in order to be most effectively prepared for that shoot. And so, especially when you're first starting out, if you haven't done a lot of, you know, different commercial shoots and you haven't worked with a lot of different brands, this is a perfect way to get started because you've got somebody there along with you who's literally a guide who's helping you know exactly what you need to be prepared for a shoot. So, if you want to apply to become a Shutterstock custom contributor, I've got all the information linked down below. And then my third method, which is honestly my favorite method and my most frequently used method. And to be honest, when I think about the clients that I have today, like people that I shoot for regularly, I've done repeat business for, I've cultivated relationships with, I understand their brand, they understand my process, we work really well together. The majority of them came out of the idea that when I do personal projects, uh, because as a photographer, I highly, highly recommend doing some self assignments, personal projects, you know, shooting things just for yourself, just for the pure purpose of growing your skills, honing your craft, getting better at what you do. I do at least two personal projects a month. Uh, Joel Grimes, who I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite photographers, he does like 50 personal projects in a year, which is like, holy moly, but I mean, evidence as to how he's gotten really good. But for me, when I'm doing those personal projects, I am very intentional about selecting a product to include in those images. Now, maybe it's not the packaging, maybe it's just the product itself, 
but that then when I take those images that I've created for my personal project and I share them out online, whether it's social media, the blog, wherever, that then I also send a direct message, usually through Facebook, Facebook direct messenger, or Instagram direct messenger, and let that brand know, hey, I love your product, I love it so much that I included it in these images, I hope you enjoy them. But now maybe you're thinking, well, but Joni, you've got you know thousands of followers on Instagram and you've got this YouTube audience and you know, so I can't do that. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. I have been doing this since day one. That I think back to like 2015 and I was doing a personal project, creating a recipe. I was at the grocery store and I saw this Greek cream cheese and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I can create a fun dessert with that and created these little chai cheesecake cups. And so what did I do? Well, when I posted that to my blog, which had no readership and posted it to Instagram, which I had no followers <laughs> and Facebook, which maybe I had a couple cause it, you know, it was back in the day and Facebook was cooler then. And then about nine months later, so this wasn't right away, generally isn't right away, but about nine months later, they reached out and said, hey, we really loved your photos. We really liked how you incorporated our product. We're needing some content for our own website. We need some photos. We need somebody to cook these recipes. Are you interested and available? Well, heck yes, of course I am. And that now has turned into a long-term relationship with this particular brand that, I mean, I just shot a series of videos for them a couple weeks ago, did a number of photos for them. And so that has turned into this really great long-term relationship all out of doing a personal project. Now, more frequently these days, when I do this, there's a good chance that, you know, I'll share those links, share the images, and the brand will come back and say, hey, do you mind if we repost this on our Instagram, on our Facebook? And I say, absolutely, have fun, I'm glad you like the image. But if they ever say, well, hey, can we include this in our marketing materials or on some banners or on our website, theoretically taking this image off of social media and using it for marketing purposes, then that opens a conversation. Again, a great opportunity for business then to talk about the licensing of those images and discuss then the compensation that's associated with that. But now I need to make a distinction between doing personal projects, marketing your business versus doing work for free that I will get emails from people and if you haven't gotten these you will that a brand might reach out and say hey we absolutely love your work can we send you our product and you can create some images of it and then in return we'll share that out and give you photo credit and share it with all of our followers to increase your exposure and you've seen the memes right like the idea that exposure doesn't pay my bills so until my mortgage company accepts exposure as a form of payment I don't either, but I don't recommend responding with something quite as sassy as that because here's the reality of the situation. In the world of food photography, as much as there is so much work to go around and there's so many people out there and there's so much, you do not want to burn any bridges. You don't want to burn any bridges in life that it is very important to be kind and to be courteous. And so even in those situations when you're like super offended because you're like, you want me to work for free? I'm not asking you to do your job for free and you want to give them that massive eye roll. It, no, don't do that. Take a moment, take a little breather, come back to it. And then what I will generally do is I will respond back by saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you like my work and thank you so much for your offer. Uh, if you would like to discuss my rates for creating custom images, I'm certainly happy to have that conversation. Let me know when you'd like to schedule something. And then at that point, they generally get the message and you know, okay, this person isn't gonna do anything for free. And usually I'll never hear back from them. But if I do, then great, then here's a conversation that's now started an opportunity with a potential client. But I think it's very important in these situations that we don't belittle somebody, we don't make them feel stupid, that we are here to educate, that we are in the wild west of photography right now, right? That the digital era has completely changed the photography industry. And so the best approach for us as photographers is to be educators, that for folks who don't understand the value of what we're providing and how much time and how much much work and intentionality and resources and equipment. I mean, I could go on and on as to the value of what we do, which you well know that it's our job to educate the industry. And the best way to educate is through kindness and being courteous and being helpful. But now here is also the big thing that you probably already know, but I'm just going to confirm it for you, is that you are going to have to get used to rejection. That if you are gonna work for yourself, if you are going to go find your own clients, you're gonna go find your own work, that not everybody is going to love
love your work, that not everybody is going to be a perfect fit for what you do. And so you're gonna get rejected. And guess what? It's not personal. And that I always think about it like this. This is something my dad taught me, that the more no's you get, the closer you are getting to that yes. That there is probably some sort of ratio, right? Like if I am making cold calls for photography work, that if for every 20 calls I make that I get one yes, well, I'm gonna go out and get 19 no's as quickly as possible so that I can get to that 20th yes. And you might go, oh, that sounds painful. But also just as an encouragement, know that this phase doesn't last forever. That if you invest the hard work in making contacts, making relationships, doing really great work for the people who are hiring you, that then that turns into referrals. That you do a great job for this restaurant, well, that restaurant probably is friends with other restaurants. And so then they'll say, hey, we hired so-and-so, they did a great job. And guess what? That turns into new business. Or that same brand then wants to hire you three months later for a new product they're launching that then you can see how the business builds upon itself and you don't need to be as actively marketing yourself as you did in the beginning so get out there don't be afraid don't make excuses go get rejected go make some friends and go find some business Stop the time.